Hey guys, and welcome back to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In the last part, we got a lot of mid-chapter stuff out of the way, so... Uh, once you... I don't think you have to talk to Merlin to open this up, but once you have Bobbery, you can blow open the wall here. This is the the crusher room where we got the key for the, the, the second curse chest. You blow open that wall, and then you get the up arrow, I think it is. Yeah, you get you get the arrow from Super Mario Maker. <laughs> and then you can take that back to Merlin to um, to be able to upgrade your party members. That is really, really goddamn important to get. Because it um, being able to upgrade your... Uh, okay, Bobbery, there's no reason why you had to move two feet to the right, but whatever, dude. Um, anyway, that's a really important thing to get because you are massively lower in power throughout the end game if you don't upgrade your party members to second tier or third tier i suppose uh, challenge run i guess um no it's, it should be doable but it because you can that's get... um that's an interesting overall game balance especially for an rpg this casual because usually the optional stuff that you get for leveling up your your party members in jrpgs is um stuff the game isn't balanced to expect you to have yeah, well, here the thing is, is that the the game makes it pretty obvious that the, the, this is something that you should do because Merlin's house is right next to Frankly's house, and you have to go to Frankly's house uh, every time you finish a chapter because that's just the status quo. He tells you what's going on. Actually, after you go to the to the thousand year door, you get warped straight to Frankly's house, and as soon as you walk outside, Merlin will be out of the house, which is weird. That's not normally how it is, and your first instinct is to talk to him. So. Um, it's not, it's not something hidden, I guess is, is the thing. Um, and also you'll be, at this point, you'll have more shine sprites than the, than, <laughs> than you'll have more sh shine sprites than you need to upgrade characters. And that will also be kind of weird. So it's not like this is something hidden in a part of the world that you shouldn't expect it to be. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no Knights of the Round. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but it, it does make the game dramatically easier because upgrade, upgrading your party members was important in the original Paper Mario just due to the, to their improved attack and their new ability. But also since in this game, your party members have HP, the HP gains you get for upgrading the party members is worth it in and of itself because i think if once you upgrade bobbery to max he gets 40 hp which at this point is likely higher than mario's probably total hp is so yeah actually mm. bobbery will it's have 35 yeah. yeah mario usually bobbery usually has more hp than mario uh does when i upgrade him uh initially <laughs> yeah so anyway um the up arrow all it does, an up arrow. Up. <laughs> so basically, th this doesn't have, this ability doesn't have any mystical uh, powers. It just reminds Merlin that he left something in his basement, in his attic, I should say. So he jumps up to his attic and drops the mystical item on the, <laughs> on the floor. So I, I <laughs> thought that that was interesting because in the original Paper Mario, they just give the Ultra Stone to you. And I'm just like, okay, is the up arrow going to do the same thing? But no, it just, it just. A it lot. just reminds him. It just reminds him that he left something in the attic. So, yeah, if, if you're talking oh, about uh, characters saying uh, unnatural things, it says, now we're cooking. So, yeah. So now we can upgrade any character we want to uh, twice. So the first one of the first... Yeah. <laughs> uh, speed up. Because we're going to be... We're, <laughs> we're going to be here wrap for... Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> we're going to be here for a while. So uh, one of the first things uh, I... The first priorities, I think, are Vivian and Bobbery. Get them up to to level 3 uh, ASAP. Uh, you can't ever level them up anymore. And there's only a... I think there are just enough Shine Sprites to get everybody up to, to max level. And there aren't any extras. Yeah. So uh, you will have to find all of them if you want to get everybody maxed out. So... Uh, keep that in mind. But what do you got to do with an extra shine sprite? They gave you more than enough. Look at it in front of a Pianta. Uh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Actually, that sounds very titillating. John, that game messed you up more than you want to admit. Oh, I hate the Pianta before that stream and after that stream. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking... No, not just the stream. I'm just talking about playing the goddamn game. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, because the Pianas are jerks. Well, true, <laughs> but you're you're taking a sadistic pleasure out of out of tormenting. No, nah, jerks is an insult to jerks. They're fuckheads. <laughs> <laughs> is fuckhead an insult to fuckheads? Nah, fuckhead is about the lowest low. The lowest low. Yeah. What about fuck nut? <sighs> Just 
Batman. <laughs> trying to figure out where that is on the ladder, <laughs> yeah, are we? Trying to figure that, yeah, on the insult totem pole. <laughs> yeah, so now that we have... Oh, yeah, I forgot that that uh, Shine Sprite was there. So now that there's just one more, now I can take it back to, <laughs> to Merlin. Might as well do this. Take it back to Merlin and then upgrade one more party member. And I believe... Yeah, I upgrade, I upgrade the Yoshi because he's probably the next most useful one and don't worry i i speed this one up too did you see the um the the intro for uh, paper jam uh no i didn't see the over uh game explain no i didn't at that um i know we i know we brought up paper jam earlier in this lp like really really early on but that's the uh crossover game right yeah the mario and luigi paper mario crossover one of the things that i didn't like about the paper mario aesthetic was how choppy the animation looked for paper mario uh, but after looking at the intro, it looks like he does move as smoothly as he does in Thousand Year Door for certain things. But that that was just the main concern I had in the first place, was that he looked like paper, he moved like paper the entire time. But that's not always the case. I still could do without the the white outline. Well, that's because he's paper, dude. They, they cut him out and put him in the real world. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Mario and Luigi is a sprite-based game, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The first so, uh, three were. Uh, is is Dream Team? Technically? Dream Team is yeah. Dream Team is sprites. Okay, yeah. yeah it, there's a lot of sprites. Well, it's Paper Jam sprite-based. Yeah, it kind of has to be. It, it is basically like yeah, all so. of the, the all of the paper characters are the same uh, sprites models. I don't really know how they did it for in Sticker Star. But they're just in the they're just in a different art style. <laughs> like you've got the Paper Mario art style just randomly. Yeah. So uh, since they're not like really really flat looking 3D models in this in Paper Jam, they're actually sprites, and that affects how the animations work. Yeah, I, I can understand them wanting to do like a more choppy thing to make them look distinct, I suppose. But it's just. I think the art style is distinct enough, if you ask me. Yeah, but it's... I don't know. It could be moving like South Park. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. This is, uh, this is uh, one of the funnier parts of the, of the game. So anyway, uh, the, the Pianta monster from Chapter 3, he's sick, and he wants to see his daughter one last time. But his daughter's being kind of a jerk right now, and she won't go back until... She finds her her wedding ring, which she lost somewhere in the in the jungle. So uh, we have to go find it for her before that we can go do that. Uh, but anyway, um, this is in order for us to even start this. Uh, Frankie has to say that he loves his wife one hundred times. One hundred to one, because you call me Bacon Burger. What the <laughs> fuck kind of one hundred and two times? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do have to mash the A button 100 times. <laughs> it starts keeping count. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you, uh, since I'm not doing the Trouble Center missions in this in this playthrough, one of the Trouble Center missions is actually for Frankie and Frances Francesca, and um, I think she loses her wedding ring again, and you have to find it in Rogueport. And uh, at that in that one, Frankie has to say "I love you" 200 times. So yeah, at the very <laughs> least, the game does speed up the 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 text scrolling after you get a certain point so it's just mashing the button and at that point i just think it's 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 a joke so i think it, it's funny <laughs> because <laughs> uh it's it's i, I don't want to say it's making fun of text scrolling in rpg because that in rpgs because that sounds a little bit pretentious to my ear now that i've said it out loud but it does mean that we have to backtrack wow. through uh the the jungle again uh the wedding rings right there it is actually pretty easy to miss so well, you know, it, it, making fun of text scrolling in RPGs is one thing. But, you know, just, you know, sometimes it doesn't necessarily need to be making fun of the thing, but sometimes just finding the inher the inherent humor in something. That's, like, that, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I, I agree with yeah. that. You also have to be careful with how you parody it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because if if not done carefully, you, you can end up playing it straight. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that's that's why I don't think I think the two hundred times one is is going overboard a bit because it takes like a good three minutes to, to mash the A button two hundred times. Uh, so I think that they should. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you thought you had your canary married training, uh, dude. My thumb my thumb got broken after all the training. <laughs> I don't have thumbs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And also, they, the, 
the the thing about Canary Mary is, is that you aren't allowed to take a break unless if you pause the game. But in there, you could like you could put the you could put the the controller down and go to the bathroom, and it, he'll still be on time number one hundred and twenty four of saying I love you <laughs> until you press. You sure are taking a long time to say I love you number seventy six compared to I love you number seventy five. Uh, I'm sorry, my short stack. Uh, uh, I love you. I your bacon burgers are waiting your response. <laughs> the hundred times. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man. But you know what? That is so small potatoes to jump rope in Final Fantasy IX. If you're going for the full thousand jumps. <sighs> no, e even if you're just going for, like, getting Five. all the cards, like, <laughs> all the actual worthwhile prizes. Uh, how, how many times do you have to jump in order to get everything that's, like, useful? One, well, for uh, bragging rights, you go to a thousand. For, uh, there's for uh, several rare reviews. cards, and I think you have to go as high as maybe 700 oh, damn. or something along those lines. Well, if you but can here's, get... here's the thing. Uh, the pace of the jump roping changes as you go. Oh. And, yeah, eventually it starts alternating between fast and slow. So you can't just, like, look at something else while you mash the A button in a certain rhythm. Is no, and in fact, you know what? The game is designed to in to immediately fail you if you mash the button too quickly. It's an anti-turbo button uh, measure. Oh, so you have to sit there and and is um I'm not sure if you know this um for the jump rope game. Do they change the pace randomly, or is it a set pace like a jump? I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it is. I, I'm pretty sure it's a set pace at specific jump levels. Okay, so it's something that you could theoretically memorize, but my god. that Yeah, but that means you're doing it even longer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's the, the having trying to memorize it so that you could attempt it while not looking at the screen would probably take longer than just focusing and getting it done, I, I suppose. So um, so anyway, this, um, this is the last time we ever have to help out the mob, so, you know, thank god that we, we get to keep our, we get to keep our kneecaps. Um... So, uh, at first, at, one of the things I find funny is that at first he's all like, oh god, what did you promise him? And then he's just like, oh, it's just a, a ticket to the train. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I want your empire. Uh, well, he, he was... If it's not now, and I'll do it later. Well, he well he did he did say he was just about to retire, so... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, so now, uh, I forget, Don Pianto will just be sitting around in the clubs in his own casino, just kind of standing there. Uh, apparently enjoying the the high life, I suppose. I, oh, I I forgot to record some of the casino. Um, you do. I think you get the tickets for the mini games by doing Trouble Center missions, and then you you can unlock certain little games you can play in the casino for uh for prizes. I don't remember if there's anything particularly good in there. Um, but they're they're all right. Uh, the mini games I think are you all based around your different um paper transformations now that i think about it i know that there's a paper airplane game and a paper boat game there might be some others um so they're, they're pretty cool um honestly though out of all of the paper mario games the one with my favorite mini game room is probably super paper mario because they they have little motion control mini games that actually work relatively well so <laughs> yeah yeah my favorite is the luigi's mansion one where you just shoot the ghosts because it's the ir pointer and it works the best <laughs> because of that no, Nintendo uh, is often pretty good with the motion control. Yeah. Well, yeah, they 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 invented the goddamn thing. They knew how to use <laughs> yeah. it right. It was the other developers that <laughs> fucked it up all the time. <laughs> and, oh, you, man. and you know, just inherently, a mini game's easier. It's easier to deal with when it's just a mini game built around it, as opposed to it being a part of the the main well, game where it's more prone well, to failure. Well, yeah, but but you'd be surprised how many third-party developers fucked up basic motion control because it was just harder to program than, you know, regular controls in a video game. But Nintendo was always pretty good about, you know, knowing the limits and and um, potential of the motion control that they were working with. Yeah. So, yeah, their games tended to be consistently good on that point. Oh, uh, that, oh yeah, uh, that mail uh, lets you know that there's a hidden door in Creepy Steeple that, where you get the, the cookbook. Oh, this is also another um, uh, point in overturn. Uh, once you start Chapter 6, you can't end, you can't go back until you end Chapter 6, so uh, just keep that in mind. It, it, you, this game does that a lot. Uh, well, 
not as much as you'd think. Chapters 1, 2, 3, uh, you can go back whenever you want. It's um, the, For the first half of Chapter 4, if you ever need to go back to Rogueport, you can. Uh, I mean, uh, It's just that, you know, in, in, in RPGs, it's usually only really customary for you to have for you to be locked into a story segment early on in an RPG. Usually later on in an RPG is when the game is supposed to be more open. Um that's, and that that is true. Um I guess it's it's just kind of status quo that you go do the chapter and then you do everything in the chapter and then you leave and you do most of your exploration after like in between chapters. Yeah. But that's if you compare Paper Mario to other RPGs. I would say Paper Mario has its own status quo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get that. At the same time though, it it does look like it could make the pace a little uneven um as far as the overall game flow goes. It like, definitely has you, a unique You'll mix. be yeah, you, you'll be focusing on a big chunk of plot for a little while. I, I've then... never been bothered by it because every location that you go to when you're locked out has their own shops and their own mm-hmm. towns to visit. So it's just a rogue port away from rogue port. 